Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and this is your detailed weather forecast update nationwide for Wednesday the 14th of January 2026. We've got a lot to get through today. We've got an intricate tropical forecast to give, particularly for the Coral Sea and for Queensland where a lot of tropical activity is expected in the next two weeks, plus also severe thunderstorm chances returning across southeast Queensland. But first, before I get stuck into the forecast update, if you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video. And on that note, I checked my analytics yesterday and I have seen that over the past three days, not one of my videos has received a dislike. So I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that is, you know, leaving a like on these videos and interacting with these weather reports. It really does mean a lot to me and that is a fantastic figure and one that is credit to all of you guys. So thank you very much for doing so. But let's get stuck straight into the forecast. Now, we do have some current tropical impacts here across northwestern Queensland as that trough strengthens, plus a tropical low out here in the Coral Sea and one other low pressure system here just offshore from southeast Queensland. But I'm going to talk about that at the end of this forecast update because the tropical update is just so intricate and so uh, you know, nuanced. So let's get things started with the chat about southeast Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. Well, we're going to be talking about a couple of thunderstorms as we head in towards this weekend. Currently, a few thunderstorms here sweeping across central New South Wales as the surface trough begins to build. And we are expecting these thunderstorms to track off in towards the northeast throughout the course of today. And a few more showers and thunderstorms are forecast throughout the morning and into the afternoon through parts of the dividing range towards the north uh, and the northeast, uh, the northwest rather of Sydney, uh, and then inland through the Hunter region and then out towards the central highlands as well through parts of New South Wales. So a couple of thunderstorms around here, Orange Dubbo Parks, the usual spots are in the firing line and you see on the forecast modelling here these thunderstorms forecast persist throughout the morning and then resurge again later this afternoon and this evening. Tomorrow we'll see a couple of thunderstorms in the morning once again, then a few more thunderstorms developing into the northeast of New South Wales. Some of these may go severe. We'll also see a couple of severe thunderstorms out here and towards western Queensland, so Cunnamulla and Charleville. We may see a pretty solid line of squall thunderstorms develop out here, which means heavy rainfall in a straight line damaging wind risk out around the Charleville area, making it out to about Roma later on into the afternoon and the evening as a, uh, a bit of a weaker storm system by around 10 or 11 o'clock at night, but lots and lots of lightning. So if you are chasing out this part of Queensland, you're going to get some cracker thunderstorms throughout tomorrow afternoon and evening. Pushing things forward a little bit further, you can see further thunderstorm activity into the northeast of New South Wales on Friday, maybe a good thunderstorm or two as well into the scenic room and Darling Downs on Friday afternoon and evening as well, particularly around the Warwick area and then also out towards the west of Warwick and Toowoomba. Uh, around the Miles area, we may see a good thunderstorm or two out here. Conditions are looking pretty solid for thunderstorms, all things considered. If we have a look at convective available potential energy, those numbers have started to increase a little bit, particularly compared to yesterday's forecast. Numbers out here between 1,000 to 2,000 through pockets of the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs, increasing to about 2,500 into the northeast of New South Wales. And if you've been watching for a while, you'll understand that those numbers are actually pretty decent, particularly for this time of the year, when instability does drop down a little bit and conditions do start to become a little bit more unfavorable for thunderstorms in this part of Australia. Wind shear values as well are uh, looking pretty decent, all things considered as well at the 700 HPA mark and the 400 HPA mark you can see Friday. We're looking at these wind shear values here getting up to about 40 knots, 45 knots in a few spots, particularly into the northeast of New South Wales. So who knows, maybe one or good, uh, one or two good thunderstorms and the chance of a thunderstorm as well into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area, although the chances there are a lot uh, weaker than what they are a little bit further inland and severe thunderstorm activity is not expected through Brisbane and the Gold Coast and thunderstorm activity in general is not expected through the Sunshine Coast. Thunderstorms will weaken off into the evening as they always do. Then we're starting off Saturday with the chance of a thunderstorm uh, through pockets of southeastern Queensland. There is a bit of a complex uh, nature to this forecast here because we do have a weak southeasterly trigger coming through and generally speaking those stronger southeasterly triggers do really make those thunderstorms particularly uh, through the early parts of the season October, November and December they make those thunderstorms really pop and you can see here this southeasterly trigger is really really weak. 15 knots as a sea breeze compared to 30 or 35 knots that we would typically be seeing uh, at this time of the year coming through uh, or uh, previously uh, in thunderstorm season coming through and towards southeast Queensland. So this very weak southeasterly trigger combined with a bit of a trough offshore and a trough uh, inland here will funnel a couple of thunderstorms up in towards the scenic rim and potentially over the Gold Coast hinterland, but I'm not expecting anything wild to pop off on Saturday, even though we do have that southeasterly trigger coming through. It's still an interesting day though, and we may see a good thunderstorm or two into the South Burnett Forecast District. There's enough instability out around the Kingaroy and the Gympie area, and then even further north up towards Tarum and Gainborough, if something can get itself going up there, there is enough instability to kick a thunderstorm or two off. And dew points as well, 
are through the roof, particularly along the Sunshine Coast and into the South Burnett Forecast District. Dew points and temperatures looking really, really healthy. And as such, I do think that we may see one or two strong thunderstorms potentially severe with heavy rainfall and damaging wind gusts getting themselves going into the South Burnett or the Wyvernhoe outlook and maybe one or two stronger thunderstorms into the scenic rim, but I doubt they'll go severe. Again, Brisbane and the Gold Coast look to miss much of this thunderstorm activity. It's a bit of a trend as of late, but if you do see a thunderstorm or two, particularly on Saturday, but also on Friday, you can expect some decent rainfall accumulations, which will be op uh, welcomed with open arms, as I can imagine, through southeast Queensland. Sunday, the chance of thunderstorms completely falls away, and the reason for that is because instability completely collapses across southeast Queensland. There will be a few pockets of instability a little bit further inland, and as such, a thunderstorm or two may get itself rolling towards the west or the northwest of Toowoomba and Kingaroy, uh, but in terms of the risk for Brisbane and the southeast coast of Queensland, Sunday is looking like a really minimal day for thunderstorm activity, but still, a few showers are possible, as they usually are at this time of the year. Just general uh, rounds of instability coming through on Monday and Tuesday, which means showery conditions with the chance of a thunderstorm embedded with heavy rainfall may come through on Monday and Tuesday through southeast Queensland. Thunderstorm chances really do pull away, though, in the lead-up to Australia Day before increasing again towards the end of January by the looks of things. But still an interesting time of the year for showers and thunderstorms across southeastern Queensland. January, we can get some good thunderstorm activity going, but it's typically a lot weaker compared to what we do see in October, November, and December. So the true months of storm season are now behind us through southeast Queensland, which is a line that I'm sure is going to make people very, very happy to hear. It's been uh, quite a while since we had a decent outbreak of thunderstorms. I really do miss the live streaming. Um, anyways, talking about New South Wales, because we do have a little bit of rainfall on the cards for the uh, eastern seaboard. In fact, particularly into the next week, we could be looking at some half-decent rainfall accumulations into the southeast coast of New South Wales. The Illawarra and the southeast region is definitely in the firing line at this point in time. Uh, all major forecast models calling for some kind of low-pressure system to get itself rolling. The Axis is calling for what could be a uh, biblical level flood coming through. I mean, looking at this here, 650 millimetres of rainfall around the uh, Batemans Bay and Bega area coming through, and most of this would come through on the weekend. So that's a terrible amount of rainfall and a terrible forecast from the Axis forecast model. But just to give you an idea of what we're expecting, it looks like a low-pressure system is going to sweep up through the Bass Strait later tonight and into tomorrow. We'll see a couple of thunderstorms develop across Victoria, particularly around the Gippsland region through tomorrow afternoon and evening, before heavy rainfall developing with an adjacent low-pressure system kicks itself off through Thursday afternoon and evening through Friday, and there's rainfall and shower activity persisting through Saturday, Sunday, and then clearing off on Monday and Tuesday for the New South Wales East Coast. So just to reiterate on that here, low-pressure system coming through this part here on Thursday, showers and thunderstorms on Thursday here in towards uh, Victoria, and then this low-pressure system sort of getting itself jammed up here against the New South Wales coastline on Friday, uh, Saturday, and then eventually on Sunday, and then all the while funneling ashore some of that heavy rainfall into the southeast coast of New South Wales, and we are expecting a period of moderate falls here across the southeast coast through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, somewhere between the 100 to 200 millimetre mark, isolated falls to 300 millimetres are a possibility, and as such, minor flooding can be expected in a number of rivers here across the uh, southeast coast and potentially even the Illawarra. The rainfall is going to be strictly coastal, so the Kosciuszko uh, National Park area, Canberra and the Capital Territory not expecting much, and rainfall stops before it gets up towards Wollongong or Sydney. So whilst a few showers are still expected to occur across more northern and central areas of the New South Wales coastline, Wollongong and Sydney, particularly through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, from the southeast, you know, typical stuff, particularly for a spring pattern uh, or an autumn pattern, we're not going to be looking at anything crazy here, no more than about 100 or 125 millimetres in this blue circle, where the heavier falls are forecast to be in that red circle here towards the south of Wollongong and Sydney. So we will also keep this in mind and we'll watch this situation quite closely, but it could still be an interesting aspect of the forecast and definitely something I'll be monitoring quite closely in the next couple of days. I don't know what the Axis is uh, thinking, but let's just have a look at the forecast model just for the fun of it. But you can see if we were to put the rainfall marker here or the pointer here just outside of Naruma, you can see very heavy rainfall accumulation has looked to be possible along the coastline here with what the Axis is suggesting, particularly on the weekend here, Saturday and Sunday. Now, Keep in mind, the axis does tend to overestimate rainfall accumulations, particularly when you've got mountainous areas adjacent to the coastline. Uh, very significant rainfall accumulations can come through in the axis uh, forecast model. So this is definitely one to be taken with a very heavy pinch of salt. And don't let anyone tell you for a second that 600 millimetres is coming through south of Wollongong or Sydney. The maximum that I can foresee right now is about 400 millimetres. And even that is a very big stretch right now, a very aggressive forecast on my part. Anyways, let's turn this video tropical. Let's go full tropical mode right now. This is a complex forecast, so buckle up, strap in, and make sure you are subscribed to get the latest tropical information. We do have the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji out here into northwestern Queensland now. That is tracking up towards the northwest, and it's going to end up in the top end of the Northern Territory, where heavy rainfall is possible this weekend. Mount Isa currently seeing a couple of good showers, particularly towards the north, and we are expecting periods of heavy rainfall here and towards north.
northwestern Queensland. So expect a reduction in uh, the speed of these water levels going down. So we're going to be looking at maybe some increases in the next couple of days and definitely a, a halt on how fast these water levels are going to be dropping through the northwest of Queensland. Showers and thunderstorms across the, uh, the central coast of Queensland here extending into the Whit Sundays and also up in towards the north tropical coast as well. Not too much rainfall associated with it, but we will still see more showers and thunderstorms here rounding around this trough into the central coast and Whit Sundays in the next 48 hours and flooding continues of course in towards central Queensland with water now beginning to pour into the Fitzroy River and significant rises around Rockhampton are expected on Tuesday. I'll touch on the flood cameras there in just a second. Tropical low 14U is located out here into the Indian Ocean. That's tra uh, the Indian Ocean. The corals seem about as far away from the Indian Ocean as you can get. Heading up towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia and we are expecting this to develop into a tropical cyclone sometime uh, by this weekend and then impact New Caledonia tracking down towards New Caledonia before heading off towards the graveyard and potentially impacting New Zealand through mid next week. Uh, in terms of Queensland impacts, the closest that this system here has a chance of getting towards Queensland is kind of along this red line here. As such, Queensland impacts are by no stretch of the imagination expected at this point in the time. This is not a tropical low down here, but it is a low pressure system that is also swinging off in towards tropical low 14U. Uh, a few showers on the backside of the system here, but they're not impacting Queensland in any way, shape or form. It will just keep things a little bit cooler across southeastern Queensland in the next 48 hours. But again, still something we will keep uh, monitoring in case something does get itself going. Another tropical low, 15 new located here offshore from northwestern WA. This is tracking down towards the southwest and we are expecting this to de develop a little bit further throughout the course of today. But tropical cyclone chances in this system here are dropping fast and it's only got about a 5 to 10% chance of developing into a full-blown tropical cyclone and it's probably got about 72 hours to do so, which given its current appearance and organisation does not look very likely at this point in time. Also, no risk to mainland Australia. So uh, the key takeaways here is a lot of systems, but apart from ex-tropical cyclone Koji, none of them are carrying a risk to the Australian mainland at all. Now, ex-tropical cyclone Koji is likely to get itself jammed up into the top end of the Northern Territory through Friday and Sunday. It will continue to funnel a few showers and thunderstorms into the Gulf of Carpentaria, which will continue rainfall for northwestern Queensland and likely associated with a monsoon trough, which will connect up towards 14U, which will be over in New Caledonia at this point in time. Showers and thunderstorms are forecast to be quite widespread through parts of Northern Queensland, particularly through this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday especially. But very heavy rainfall is like looking quite likely to develop as the remnants of tropical cyclone Koji begin to develop. Now, this is where the forecast really breaks down in terms of consistency. There's two things that are likely to happen right now. Number one, an area of low pressure is likely to develop here. Whether that's remnants of tropical cyclone Koji or a brand new low pressure system, something is likely to kick itself up around Saturday and Sunday towards the north of WA and then develop into a tropical low or potentially even a tropical cyclone and then bringing impacts to the WA coastline, whether it's rainfall or a full-blown tropical cyclone impact around January 20th. The second thing that's likely to happen is a broad area of low pressure is likely to develop somewhere in this circle here, heading over to the Gulf of Carpentaria or in towards the Coral Sea, either way bringing very heavy rainfall to extreme far northern Queensland and likely some heavy to moderate rainfall accumulations towards northern Queensland and far northern Queensland as well, particularly between the 20th out to about the 25th of January right now. These two systems are non-negotiables. We're looking at these and they are very likely to happen. But there's a lot of things that could happen here. What is looking most likely right now is that the remnants of extropical cyclone Koji are going to become this low pressure system and we'll get a brand new system here, BN for brand new system uh, up here towards northern Queensland that will bring more rainfall. What could also happen is Koji doubles back and then heads down towards Queensland, still bringing that rainfall through the Gulf of Carpentaria and particularly towards northern Queensland, but it will become more of a northwestern Queensland focused rainfall event. This is looking a little bit more unlikely and then a separate low pressure system subsequently developing here towards the north of WA. But you kind of get my drift here. Either way you cut it, because there is a lot of options here, low pressure systems that could develop, they may not develop, but either way you cut it, there's multiple areas that we are going to be watching for rainfall and thunderstorm activity and potential tropical cyclone development. For rainfall and thunderstorm activity, we're looking at these areas here towards the Northern Territory, Northwestern WA, and then these areas through here in towards Northern Queensland, including pockets of Northwestern Queensland. And you can also see far Northern and Northern Queensland, which has already seen some significant flooding. In terms of full blown tropical low or even tropical cyclone risks, there is a good chance here that something kicks itself off out towards the tropical waters of the Indian Ocean. And whether that becomes a West Australian threat, still out there for the weather gods to decide, but around Australia Day may start to get a bit interesting around here into the Pilbara and the Kimberley coastline. There is a small chance of tropical low develops here into the Gulf of Carpentaria or into the Coral Sea. And what, or either way you cut it, that always means a tropical cyclone chance, particularly for Queensland. But at this point in time, in terms of specifics, whereabouts, if it is going to develop at all, uh, we really don't know at this point in time. So this 
going to be one that we need to be watching quite closely, but in terms of the risks right now, not something that I'd be worrying about or panicking about right now. We just know that an uptick in rainfall and thunderstorm activity is likely to kick off after this weekend, most likely after about Sunday, so the 19th out to about the 25th, but probably around the 20th out to about the 25th of January, and this will be another area to watch here across northern Queensland. I hope that makes sense. It does make sense in my head, which I'm really hoping makes sense in your head as well, but if you are feeling confused, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to help you out personally. But at this point in time, it's a complicated forecast, but one that if you break it down in a simple uh, way is a little bit easier to understand. So I do hope that that really does help. But either way you cut it, Northern Queensland is getting another two week wet period as we've discussed over on Facebook. And speaking of Facebook, if you want further weather forecast updates, then make sure you do go and check out my Facebook page and I'll help you out over there. That is going to do it though for today's weather forecast update. It has been a bit more of a long winded one this morning. We've talked about a lot of complex stuff. So go out there, go make yourself a coffee. You deserve it if you've made it through this uh, part of the video. And if you have, then please, you consider leaving a like as well. A massive thank you to everybody that has actually been interacting with the videos lately. I mean, I, I don't really check those numbers, but um, the likes and the shares especially, like uh, that really was, uh, that made me smile when I saw it. Not a single dislike in the past three days or three and a half days, the past seven or eight videos. So thank you very much to everybody that has been commenting and leaving a like. That really does mean a lot. But that is going to do it for me today. A massive thank you to our channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them. And of course, if you too want to get in, I mentioned it this time in the forecast update, then click the join button. That is all for me today, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.